Sonder should win this? Uh, yeah, they definitely should. Because I, I do think Sonder is a better team. Um, I'd agree. And I think they've also been playing very well lately. Whereas in control, I don't know if they've struggled lately, but I think they've been about. I didn't like it. I didn't like it when they lost to Nylon and Rob Dora Domo when two of those people on that team were drunk. Um, wait, that was Sonder. That was Sonder. Sonder lost to that team. Sonder lost to Dora Rob Domo. Uh, uh, Nylon. I mean, okay, but but I do think I do think that is a very strong roster and. Playing Splatoon is pretty natural, and if you're drunk, you can still do pretty well. I've won a lot of drunk games before, so, but still, uh, yeah. Um, I think Sondra are good. It was a slip up, but. I, I think at some point you just have to get tilted by that sort of a thing. <laughs> like, yes, definitely. Come on, we're losing to people that are drunk, and then you put more pressure on yourself, and then you just lose. It was also a long tournament. Yeah, it, I, I it, think that's just kind of how it works. Yeah, it was also a long tournament. The last time they played Ink won, apparently. Um, oh, okay. And yeah, I, I think Ink don't play enough tournaments to really prove themselves. But I remember I casted like a. Uh, I casted some weekly where Ink just completely rolled over everyone a while ago. Like, really, really hard. And yeah, you'd kind of expect them to, but like, they, they rolled over Azor, like, really, really hard. And Azor, like, not a top team, but I didn't expect it to be a rollover, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Azor has been struggling a little bit lately with. A couple of roster changes to try to figure out. I'm pretty close friends with them, um, so I think that makes sense. I obviously don't expect them. Like I think, in control is the clear favorite over them. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Hey, look, we can sit here and speculate all we want, but that's why we play the game. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. I think this is actually gonna be a good match. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. So getting into it. Best of five, random map. Skip Pavilion is the first one. Um, if I see an air spray, a no. silver air spray, I might. Most likely going to see a Culling Rush uh, Tantrum shit. Oh no, Shinex going through the junior, uh, fully in the junior role recently, I guess. I was expecting maybe a uh, Culling Rush Tent because Tent is good on this map. Shinex plays Tent, Culling Rush good on this map, but no. We do see different approaches though, of like the split going down oh. to mid and not going down to mid. Also, uh, Carbon Gecko coming out here for Omega. I, I guess. Now Omega that, is a one-shot combo. Think about that, and that out loud, like that makes sense. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it'll kind of be interesting. I, I feel like Carbon in this map probably could work because I feel like there are a lot of different angles to approach. Um. But it will probably like obviously it just gets hard countered by a lot of things if you can just get it at a decent enough range. And Josh is probably going to try to shut that down as soon as he can. I really liked the way that he moved in right there. They got the pick and they kind of moved his unit really, really fast and really well. Unfortunately, Junior's just going to take down the charger, so now it's more even fight. And Omega will start trying to move in, but taking him out will probably mean it's going to be the full flip of Sonder. Although, they're not stalling it right now, and it looks like people have kind of fed themselves a little bit. And actually, that's going to be the flip going over to uh, In Control here. That shouldn't have really happened, but unfortunately, Sonder let themselves uh, slip a little bit there. Yeah, and you really hate to see that sort of a thing. Josh is going to try to neutralize as much as he can. Gets one onto Omega here and is actually doing a very good job of just doing the fancy footwork to stay alive. Um, and it looks like here with a bomb rush, I think there's enough people in zone here for Slaunder, and they are going to go ahead and get that back. So, yep. uh, we're about there to move back in. And now, actually, Slaunder is in a decent position to hold on to this. Maybe? Question mark? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good. This game is definitely being a bit scrappy so far. Both teams are kind of getting control and then allowing themselves to get taken out. Um, and now, yeah, it's going to be another 2 down situation where I feel like uh, you, we could easily see in control come back in there. The only thing that we're going to need to see is when they do come back in, if they take the zone, are they going to let their members not fall down? But it looks like their members do fall down. It's only the Nort Nathan zone, but the Nort gets another pick. It's been really, really, really scrappy fight. And now it looks like it might get turned back over to in controllers. Now they're bombing the rushing the zone and they might be turning this back over. This is uh, definitely quite a... Scrappy. I wouldn't say slo it's sloppy slash scrappy game right now coming out for these teams. It's uh like they're not playing poorly, but it looks like they're both punishing each other's mistakes very well, but they're also both making these over extensions that cause them to happen, leading to very, very back and forth situation. One of the things you just saw there was that there was a very nice collapse around two people that control was just able to pull off. Now swings back the other direction is it's a 4v1 actually on, around the zone here. Saunders able to cap that. Shinex was charging armor in Dojo, so I had to jump on back. Um, now has that at the ready for the push back in. Um, honestly, I'm not sure 
how effective armor is. I guess it's relatively effective if you can get that to the Carbon and the Nautilus. Uh, but I would like to see Shinnok step forward before popping that. So it's just going to pop it out if I just say he can probably step forward. Uh, <laughs> ooh, was that a bomb or something? Yeah, I think I'm watching so. overhead right now to actually stay in time with you. Right. <laughs> it, it, it was a bomb, yeah. Uh, and that will also make it getting this part And I also think another really useful uh, piece of information, right, is um, the armor, in my opinion, is going to be really, really useful for shutting down synapse. I think armor is very annoying to do with if you're 52. And that, again, really helps Omega and the Nort because I think that 52 does pretty well against... Uh, it does really well against Carbon. 52 does really, really well against Carbon. So if you can help Omega with that duel, then it helps a lot. And uh, you know, right now, Omega's been putting in some decent... But it looks like... I feel like Omega and the 52 are both struggling on this whole map. It's a pretty, been a pretty long-range game. They've both been getting punished a lot. But uh, the flip does go over while we're in the middle of this. Flip is able to come on through here for Sonder, and they just kind of stole that out. I think Incredible is just kind of backing away now. Trying to run, run away from the special onslaught, but they really weren't able to do everything they wanted to. Omega's actually able to get one, and now he's able to get a second. Uh, is going to get taken down here, but now it's a two, for, two squid up situation for Sonder. Zone flipping back the other direction. Both the charges holding it down on zone. Why does this keep going back and forth? Why do you guys just pull out of the zone and make this a normal game, please? Yeah, it, it's like, I feel like both these teams, I, I, I kind of said it earlier in a long hand way, but both these teams are like amazing at punishing, but they both overextend. So then their front line's overextending, getting punished, front line's overextending, getting punished, and it flips, it flips, it flips because of that. It looks like they're finally chilling now, though. Both teams are finally chilling. They're drunk with an actual engagement here. They're happy to let the zone, you know, the, the lead step over because they want to go for an actual concise win here in the last minute of the game. That's much more important. Uh, and getting out too. That's gonna be really, really nice. It looks like there's a bit of connection stuff going on, on my end. Uh, is Omega lagging or am I lagging or is the lobby lagging? I can't tell. I I can't tell either. Um, <laughs> I imagine that's a little bit of a tilter for Sonder if they saw what we saw. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would be tilted. But Intral is gonna have one last opportunity here to stay alive on his own. Three specials are up right now for Sonder, including one of those armors. So um, they're going down with this top mid approach that we've seen from them before. We have bomb getting onto the zone. I think they're going to be able to get the cap here with the Ink Storm as well. They are going to be able to secure that. How can they stay alive? It looks like they're going to be able to here. Uh, that is going to be Henlo going down. Cadence on top of the zone here. Probably going to get taken out. It's actually doing a good job of staying alive. Inkjet comes on through here as well. Judge trying to find the picks from afar here with the Charger or just trying to stay alive in general. But I don't think the caps have become in from in control. One last dish effort with the bomb rush here. And he is be able to be enough to cap the zone. Losing control as bomb rush goes back to the direction. Or can we just get any more ink on the zone? All right, fine. Okay. <sighs> that was, that uh... was just kind of a coin flip of, uh, of an entire game, honestly. It was just like, let's throw everything we have in the zone and see what sticks. That was a very team deathmatch game right there. That was a very, very team deathmatch game. Um, no, well, not as in the spots were high. It was just like... It didn't seem like either team were playing around the objective too well. There was a lot of overextension. There was a lot of people just going down. There was a lot of flipping backs and forwards, control going all over the place. It it wasn't clean. It wasn't clean, to, to say the least. Um, I think, you know, both these teams just got, like, kind of out of their round one, round two matches. I doubt any of them had, you know, any major trouble. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the bracket right now. Both of them just kind of went through them. They're probably not kind of brain on yet, if you know what I mean. Uh, so... I, I'd put it down to that. I don't think this is the peak performance of either team we're watching right now. No, absolutely. I mean, again, that's one of the interesting things about this tournament is that this kind of a match is happening in round three, right? Yeah. This is happening in top 16. Um, so that just kind of sets the stage for what else is going to happen uh, in terms of the sheer skill of the teams, right? I imagine that it's going to be ramping up over the course of the day. Uh, obviously, these teams are not warmed up yet. They've, this is their second set. One of these two teams is going to get sent down to losers, and they're going to probably have to try to find a way to fight back through. But again, you have to figure that there's so many other teams that are around this skill level too. Um, so definitely going to be uh, interesting to kind of see exactly how that one comes on through. Um, next map is going to be Anchovy Games. Uh, as a reminder, random. Yep. Um, I feel like Carbon's going to be even more difficult on this map. If it was difficult on Skipper, it's going to be more difficult on Ancho. I, I think Carbon does really well here. It can do really well here. If you can play around, if you can play around the fans well, you can put a lot of pressure on. Even if you can get Spawn Camp going, if they can get Spawn Camp going, they could do a lot of work with that. Uh, Ten is also very strong here, which right. I know Shinex has played, but it looks like he's kind of accepting that Junior is easier to play around. Like I, I don't like saying having an armor all the time is outright better because I don't think that's true. I think it's easier for the entire team to play that. I'm not saying, oh, Shinex isn't good enough to play 10. I'm saying 
the team isn't good enough to play without the armor and with the tennis, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying this team, I'm saying most Western teams, because it's harder to play without armor on your team. Right. It, it, it is it is much easier to play with armor. Um like I, no, again, I, I don't think it's the strongest option 100% of the time like everyone does. I just think it's a very, very easy option and you don't want to take risks in a tournament, you know? So it's fair enough. I, I respect it. Yeah. No, I agree. I think uh, it's definitely much easier to play around armor and that's one of the reasons why I'm such a strong proponent of it. Yeah. Is like, I feel like one armor is a necessity. I'll get on another like kind of uh, train if we ever see a two armor composition. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, cause I'm a strong proponent of anti-double armor, but, right. uh, we'll get there when we get there. I see an E-leader here actually coming out of Sven. Uh, opting for that extra range of this map, do you know if that's actually, like, how much of a benefit does that provide? Uh, I'm unsure about the range, but I do know that E-leader has been very, very popular recently. Um, I played against right. E-leader in a couple of scrims, and the range difference is noticeable. It's not completely broken. The biggest difference maker is the paint difference. You paint like crazy on E-leader. The amount of output you get with spamming clouds and just general, your shots are really big with MPU, it's very, very, very crazy. But we're going to see... Uh, it's on the charge put back in now. It looks like they have a lot of painting specials, so they're going to be able to do it pretty quickly. But unfortunately, allowing uh, one of their players to get traded by the Nautilus isn't going to be too, too nice to try and keep this. I feel like the 3v3 situation is always favored for defense, but it does look like they might have to start moving forward now and take this. Yeah, I think it was a good use of the Ink Storm pressure too, which the Ink Storm, again, something that we don't see that often here. Uh, of course, that was used by uh, the CDS player here. I believe that is uh, Caden yep. playing those. Um, that was good use of pushing in with the Ink Storm, right? If you throw the Ink Storm up, it's not going to get much work done. But if you're actually actively using that to help you paint the map, I think it's going to be uh, something that a lot of people kind of sleep on. Um, so again, interesting to see exactly how that comes in. Also worth noting that, of course, there's one to answer on the in control side of the map, and they do that as well. Uh, they're able to push through the zone with the Ink Storm there as well. Bomb Rush coming in from the top on Josh, and it's actually going to be enough to cap the zone here. I guess in control is just busy not trying to paint the zone. All right, any zoners? Any zoners? Uh, no, that's the answer. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be pushing up right now. Again, trying to find that pressure. And uh, you know, my, my proof to carbon is decent hate. We've got 6k, putting in a lot of work. Um, but no, I do think this weapon, this map is kind of weird. It's very, very open in the middle. But I think if you can get to the right places, then short range weapons such as Gal, such as Carbon, can end up doing a lot. You just need to put yourself in the right position. And now Omega is going to allow him to walk forward so he can start punishing them. And he does ooh, eventually take out signups with the health his team. Well, his team takes him out, but he does the majority of the damage, gets the distraction, does what he needs to to help take him out. And that's going to allow in control to take the lead and start moving forward. And I think, again, it's the comp is going to work a lot better when they have control. Because overall, yes. running not Carbon, it's hard to get the control. When you have it, you can do a lot. Absolutely. Like, I think that was one of the things that I was commenting on when I was like, well, Carbon isn't going to be very good here. Because if you're just in the middle firefight on top of the zone, yeah. you're not going to be able to get in a lot of work here. That three down situation now forces Sondra to try to push back in here, but they don't have a lot to do with with the uh, armor user and that junior getting taken out first. That is going to be the game secured for in control. Uh, well played there in order to capitalize on that push that they had at the end. Um, and yeah, good stuff from them. One to one in the game. Uh, best of five series, so effective best of three now, and uh, yep. definitely gonna be interesting. Um, I I'm waiting for the first like sore thumb map. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I I I'm wait no no I I'm waiting for the tweets when Moray comes up in grand finals. That's what I'm waiting for personally. Uh, uh, <laughs> that is that is what I'm excited for, Kbot. But no, I, I genuinely do think that was a much better. Uh, game played by in control i think one actually uh thing there that came up in my opinion is it looks like they understood the map a lot better i feel like on skipper they really struggled knowing okay when we have control where are we going with our weapons who are we putting where what are we putting this what are we putting we have walleye oh we have walleye uh that's gonna get some heat but yeah um so I, but i feel like on that map they had a much better idea of okay we're putting this guy here we're putting this guy here we're putting this guy here etc 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 i realized i'm not streaming the right thing etc 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 um <laughs> and that led the to have a really successful game um i feel like they could do a similar thing here it's again another map where the karma's gonna have a hard time fighting on mid um kind of you know it, it's open but if they get control it starts becoming very annoying when they sit under your crate it's so annoying Absolutely. to remove a roller sing in that position i've played about 90 scrims against polar knight and it's so annoying when you just have like a charger in the back looking at you all the time and then atomic just on the crate always moving everywhere you can't move in and i feel like if in control can get a setup like that going it's gonna be hard uh i think sign up's gonna need to put on a lot of work in this game to try and deal with the carbon because i think he's the weapon does very well against it i might be wrong on the matchup Once but again, i think it does walleye warehouse uh in case you all have forgotten 
One's called the final destination of Splatoon for how polarizing <laughs> it is. Um, because it, it it is just a flat, narrow map, right? It is yeah. very difficult to do much. It is very easy to lock out your opponents on this map because there are only like three different angles that you need to cover. You know exactly where they're coming from. They can be easily shut down with almost any special in the game. Um, so this match very quickly could go either direction. And I imagine based on what we're seeing from these two teams, um, I think I favor in control more in their ability to find the lockout and keep the lockout. Yes. Um, especially given the fact that Saunders' win so far in this set has been one of those very scrappy neutral game fights. I don't expect to see that on this match. Neither do I. And but Omega starts moving forward and does get a really, really nice map. But that's really good from Josh, actually. Kite did that job and very, very well and able to take him out of the top shots. That's going to be crucial to keeping this because Sidehouse is now back in. You might be able to take this as long as no one goes down to Stingray. You should be okay, but being forced to jump in, that's really bad. And that is going to be the first control going over to in control. Do you talk about... Expand on the concept of kiting a little bit because I feel like All that's right. something we don't talk about in Splatoon. So if something's moving at you and it wants to kill you, walk away from it. That, that's, that's the basic idea. You, kiting is the idea of like walking away from it, allowing them to either put themselves in a bad position or expend their resources, and then you can start moving in with your own resources and punish them for it. I always say it but with armor. Also, Sorry, yeah. It, in my mind, kiting is also bringing it towards one of your teammates, right? Yeah. In order to generate a, a squid advantage, right? So getting that two versus one situation as opposed to one versus one situation. Very easy to do when you're facing something like a brush or a carbon. Push coming in though, from Son or here, they're throwing all their specials on top of the zone, but they're not moving forward with those specials. Might see a collapse run zone coming back in from in control, but it looks like they're backing away all the same. Incomer comes out of Shinx at the very last moment. Uh, Omega's gonna have to jump in and try to get some work done. But this is, this is part of the thing where we're starting to see a little bit more of the scrappier fighting here. Uh -huh. Um, and I, I don't even know what to think of this point. Like, where is anyone going to focus on the zone at all, guys? Um, guys, uh, guys. I, I, I will just say, I feel like I can be a bit more mean today because it's my own stream. I, Hanlo should not have done that. Um, I, I, as a junior, you don't want to... You, you can chase people that are weak, you can chase some situations, but you don't want to put yourself in a corner with a Nautilus and a Carbon, two of the best just pure killing weapons in the game, when you've got a zone to pain, and you're the zone pain to man. Um, definitely not a play I was a fan of. I think the Henlo should just be focusing around trying to paint up the entire map right now, getting an armor ready for the next engagement. It looks like he's finally doing that. Uh, again, I, I, I don't want to completely say that because people never go for fights on Junior, and I think it really can take engagements in the right situations. The right situations, not the Nautilus and a Carbon in the corner away from something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all of that said, though, Sonor has control of the yeah. zone again. Uh, they'll have to fend out this push here coming in from in control, and they might be able to do that. You'll notice they're not in very strong positions. They're right on top of the zone right now, which is going to actually be able to kind of mitigate this pressure here. Uh, Inkjet wasn't able to find much uh, output. Swen goes down here as well on that charger, and now Omega's just getting bullied on the side of the map. Madness is trying to come on in here, but doesn't have really much, a lot of map control to actually do a lot. Uh, I say that, and Omega comes up with a double. Okay, calm down. That's a complete wipe on the Sonder, and Ink Control stays alive in this game. That's a big thing with Ink Control, in my opinion. I feel like they're a team that... If they're losing a team fight, Carbon has this massive X factor where it could just come through, and because it's time to kill is so uh, it's so low, you can just come out of nowhere and find a double and turn the team fight. That's exactly what Omega did, and that was really really strong. I will also say, you know, props to Hendo for rushing the charges and rushing the right person. He did actually play that really well. It's just unfortunate that Omega just played that even better and managed to flip it for his team. And it looks like he might be able to do that again, but the armor does save the team, and they're not able to find a single pick, which will allow uh, Sonder to now push in and find the control. That was really, really well played by Caden and I believe uh, Hemlo there, just kiting and being able to take them out to move into zone. However, the Steam Ray did take out enough people to uh, make this an even situation again, Kbot. Yeah, so again, by the way, going back to that very pivotal moment is one of the reasons why I was saying, hey, maybe you want to start taking positions ahead of the zone. Right now, we're watching as Sonder is sitting all on top of the zone. I mentioned that Walleye Warehouse is one of the easiest maps to force that lockout situation. That doesn't happen in this exact position. That starts to happen when you're starting to move towards your opponent's box, move to your, towards your opponent's first ramp there. Omega is just going to continue stopping on top of these bases. Able to take down Josh there on the E-leader, now cleaned up here. Sonder has control of the zone. Here come a couple of last hit specials, but I don't think it's going to be enough here. No paint on the zone, and Sonder's going to actually walk away with that game. Whoever got the crucial pick onto Shinex, that they saved the game. That was a massive, massive pick right there, because I feel like we could clearly, clearly see that these teams are both playing our pretty kind of simple style that we all know by now of let's sit on our side of the map let's get our specials let's move on to our specials when the main special that you want to walk forwards with and the only guy on your team that can paint in a split second gets shot out of the air every everything goes to 
everything just goes at that point. It doesn't apply. Uh, so absolutely crucial pick onto Shinex to turn this into a 2-1 situation in Sondra's favor now instead of uh, in controls. I think there are a lot of... The I really wish I was recording the overhead on that set. I, I really <laughs> yes. do wish I was recording the overhead. Um, so a little bit unfortunate there. I I, I, I th even thought about it after game one. I was like, oh, I should have recorded it. So maybe I'll start starting in the next set. But there were a lot of like eye-opening picks there, especially like ones that uh, Omega got to try to switch it back for in control. Um, ones that Sondra had. Um, but again, like I think we don't talk about the value of specific splats all of the time in the game, yep. right? We talk often about, you know, or I talk often about uh, squid advantage. I talk often about, okay, well, if you have a 4v2, obviously it's going to go for the four almost any day of the week. Um, but, you know, outside of that, uh, we don't talk about, like, those almost like first blood situations, Yeah, right? Um, how is that going to actually snowball into your team getting an advantage? Um, so that was probably, you could probably pick out a couple there, um, where a lot of these teams were trying to do that, um, including the one you just mentioned, but, uh, yeah. All right. Now back to a neutral map here for game four, make a mark. A neutral map, but it, it's Mako. And oh, I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking. I don't know if you cut out when you stopped talking, but either way, carbon on Mako. That's what I'm saying. I believe you cut Do you out. think that's good or bad? Okay, no, never mind, never mind. Um, it's amazing. This is one of the best carbon maps in the game. Uh, I've seen uh, Rob specifically, because I, I, I kind of know that little subsection of people. Rob is a brush player. Uh, brush isn't bad here. It's just that he will often go carbon here because carbon is very, very strong. You can control uh, under their drop down when you move up on left side. You can just sit under there. They come forwards you're being annoying. Not only that, but the middle of the zone, it's finally, we're finally getting a map where in the middle of the zone, you can fight a lot because you can go on top of the, uh, both sides boxes and just pop up and just find splats very easily. You can very easily maneuver to them, you know, without being caught out, without being stopped. Uh, I think it's going to get a lot of value. It's really, really going to be hard for Sondra to deal with. And, you know, talking about that, I think that kind of the firepower argument, that's what in control are playing for you know they're definitely not playing for let's paint everything look at their comp they have no carbon they're just trying to out firepower you so this is going to be a really nice map pick for them in my opinion well not map pick nice nice lot of rng for them nice nice bit of rng uh other bit of updates uh bad emoji lost to barracuda two to one well, who's that emoji classic as right now that was a uh, sendo's pickup sendo brian dj taylor wow um uh, Barracuda being like a Div 3 team, I actually know them. <laughs> I don't know many teams at that level, but I do know them personally. So, wow. All right, I DC'd from this lobby, so I'm going to literally only be watching the three-second delayed uh, 240p stream. All right, I'll let you comment on some stuff you see, and I'll try and, like, play by play this as much as I can. But cool. Stingray gets popped immediately uh, with income on both sides. Unfortunately, Sidex goes down once again really early, and that's not what you're going to see. But Omega being forced to... You know, play around that stingray so much, isn't able to find any picks, but it does look like the zone still will go over in control favor as Omega's gonna try and find some more picks, but he doesn't actually. And that was a really good display of kiting right there. Sonda knew they lost the initial kind of middle of the map, and then they just left the middle of that. They walked to the sides, and then as soon as everyone had overextended, as soon as they used their specials, they walked in and they found the control, they capped the zone. That was really, really well done. And yeah, that's gonna have Sonda uh, being in first control, which is crucial to shout out the carbon Nautilus. We're just here to shout out the Carbon Nautilus, but if we've seen any indication of so far what's going on in this set, I imagine that Snodder is probably not going to take the strongest positions here in terms of a potential lockout. You'll notice they're playing very much around the zone right now. Um, is that the right play? I don't really know. You can probably talk about that after this match and all reviews and the like. Um, but the push is going to start coming in for in control. And you'll notice that it's very easy. It's much easier for them to be able to get that ink and get those specials on top of the zone right now. With the bomb rush coming in, though, as well, it's a two-done situation, actually, though, for in control. So Saunders is going to hold on to this. They're looking to take the set right here. Uh, two-done situation for them, though. So hopefully I want to see in control move back in here. They are going to be able to find the cap, forcing that penalty. Well done to them in order to extend this game. That's really nice for Madlas dropping down and finding that pick and then putting himself in the situation. Now pop this in-chat and that spawn. Stingray, no MC in spawn anymore. So they're either going to be forced to move far away or they're going to get taken out. They do manage to avoid getting taken out by the inkjet, but that did manage to slow down the Stingray very, very well, and that is going to help in control with that holdout. Madness is really going to find want to find this pick on the junior. He isn't quite able to do it, but putting some damage on is really, really going to help push back the enemy team and put this pressure on them. But the armor does come through, and now Booyah Bomb 
for Saunders. It's most likely going to be a push coming through. We're just awake on them to move forwards here. And, uh, but I, I don't know. In control, control just seems really, really good right now. I hate the word control being a thing in Splatoon and in control having to be a sponsor because saying control, control doesn't work. Really doesn't. Uh, Shinex here going over the side to try to charge in armor, try to provide a little bit more for the rest of this team. But you'll notice again, in control, taking those further ahead positions, being nuisances well in advance of getting to the zone. Looks like it doesn't even matter though, with the stigma, able to shut things down here. Sonder is able to move back in here. That's a pretty dense situation uh, in order to take care of this. Uh, Swen though, getting the pick back on to Josh, uh, which is going to mean that the stingray isn't going to be there for a little while longer. Sonder is going to have to reset and probably allow in control to get back in those positions where they were able to make such a long push. Yeah, definitely. They don't have, you know, the crazy map control that we saw from Sonda earlier, but they are kind of in better positions. Shinex actually Sharky on side, really doesn't want to get taken out while he has the armor. I respect that play. And he allows them to just go forward and get that really, really early pick on Shinex. Might get taken out here, but no. Actually, he's able to find the triple off his play. He doesn't get every single kill there, but off that play, a triple was created, and that's going to be in control. Be able to get a lot of stuff done, but unfortunately, Josh is able to find the pick onto Madness, uh, but the lead does flip, but this will allow Sonders now move forward back into the zone here, as the Booyah Bomb is popped, the timer is going down, but most likely going to be a zone turn here, hopefully Josh gets to pick on the Sigrate, or it's going to be all for nothing, but no, Sonder do find to control of the zone. Able to find a control of the zone, two down situation now, so Sonder's going to be able to hold onto this one now, can they hold on to it for long enough is the primary question. Uh, again, the ties have turned once again in the terms of this match. Uh, you'll notice that Omega's not really going to be able to do much right now until that armor gets to uh, We're really expecting Shinex to charge that armor as soon as possible to get this team back into the zone. We'll see if they can do that now, but they're probably going to have to wait until that Nautilus comes back up. They might run out of time here. That was really unfortunate. Again, really, really big pick. Getting that single pick made them a lot, lot slower. And now they're jumping on the zone, but it's much more of a desperation push. You can see they don't have the exact positions they would have liked to have earlier, but it looks like a zone flip might have a top anyway. But no, the Beal Bomb comes through, but Omega drops down, does it with find a pick, but it's a trade. Very, very nice trade to the side of Sonder, and that will be the lead flipping. It's only two points left in this game. It does flip in the last few seconds, and this is definitely winnable for in control, but Sonder got a really, really nice defense there. Woo! Back and forth once again, folks. This is only game four here of this set in control again, looking to stay alive on the winner's side of the bracket. We are in winner's double elimination tournament as a reminder of what is at stake here. Uh, and this is only round three. This is like top 16 of this tournament right now uh, on the winner's side. So again, you'll notice in control looking for the positions that they were looking for earlier, but the special is actually coming out very early here. Or Sonder able to cap this zone, able to apply that penalty, and able to force in control to re reset in order to get themselves back into this one uh and now one going down once again that Carter roller not going to have that much of a presence here moving on forward here and he is going to allow Sonder here to continue to slot things out charge their specials and it's going to be able to make this final engage Ray coming out from Josh needs to find a pick if you don't find a pick then you're doing nothing and there's not going to be any pin on the zone just find two though that's absolutely huge there's not much time though so the real bomb to come out fast and it does and that is going to be the flip Sonder take the series 3-1 but I, 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 I wish that was a 3-2 just so it said 3-2 on challenge. That's the only reason I care about it being a 3-2, because that does not deserve to be a 3-1. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, insanely close match there between those two teams. Um, and really good stuff. I mean, again, expected Saunders to probably play better, uh, but probably in control, right? Yeah. Uh, they're certainly not a team that you want to mess around with. And it's very interesting. I think one of the things that we have, or I know I for sure haven't really looked at much are other play styles of some of these teams yep. right um looking at how they're holding on to the zone how they're uh kind of what are they implementing here right obviously we were talking about in control being much more of that aggressive composition with that nautilus carbon front line um whereas sonder is a little bit more reserved in terms of oftentimes you'll see josh on a charger or a custom jet squelcher um You'll see, you know, CDS out of Henlo, Kensa 52, opting for a little bit more of that range, opting for the Booyah Bomb in order to help support things. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, please upload these vlogs onto YouTube, Matt. Okay. <laughs>